K96.3, Kelowna's classic rock. I'm Ricky Tyler, and I'm really happy to introduce Honeymoon Sweet frontman, Johnny D. Hi, Johnny. Welcome to the show. I was looking forward to this call. I love Kelowna. I should have been, I was going to move there, um, you know, and just did, did not happen. Oh, but when was that, that you were going to move here? It was about, uh, it's got to be a year and a half ago now. I think I mentioned it on stage. You, you got this place there. It's, it's, it's like a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, so I've done it. And uh, I think I mentioned it. I have a, de- there's a developer friend that I know who's bought property out there. And um, well, actually bought two condos, like side, side by side whatever nice um things got like just way too busy and uh couldn't do it but i'm definitely want to get on the west coast and Kelowna's like yeah it is beautiful here isn't it and it's really singer uh singer friendly i mean uh there's a moistness to the air i'm in ontario right now i'm quite close to i'm close to buffalo and it's like really like today is like it's just so humid it's like unbearable it's like nuts but I love it out there. You know, it's never too late. You could change your mind. Oh, it's not. It's just a matter of, of timing. I got my mom who's moved in with me to one of the places that I own, like next door to mine. So now, now with all this time off, um, now that Johnny's home, it's like, okay, you take care of her. And I was like, wow, that's a, that's a lot of work. But, uh, hey, I'm doing it. Um, it. It's great times. Like, we're excited about the new single and all that sort of stuff, Ricky. And it's like... It's great. Thanks. It is so good. I love it. It's a real rocker. Uh, just so uh, my, my listeners know, it's called Find What You're Looking For. And back on the charts after 19 years. Congratulations. Like, how does that feel? Yeah, well, go figure. <laughs> how does it feel? I'm totally <laughs> like... It's just- I'm totally ecstatic. Like, these things are the things that you wish for, you know? Right. And uh, you don't expect them. Um, You can only keep writing the best songs that you possibly can, put it out there, and hope for the best. Three weeks ago, well, you know, know, getting on my computer, and it's like, Johnny, the song is charting. And it's like, well, you know, you just lose yourself. And it's like, it's totally wild. All that is great. But now, like... The frustrating part is that we can't get out there and play it. You know, I'm not whining, not whining by any means. I mean, this is part of the world right now. It's all crazy times, right? It sure is. Uh, But it's pretty nuts that we can't, uh, you know, get on stage and play the damn, uh, play, I was going to say, you know, whatever. But uh, (laughs) It's good. It's all good. Can't can't get up on stage and play it. It's it's just frustrating. Yeah. So, but, but it's all good. And as soon as this, uh, Hopefully for everybody in the world, this COVID thing will, will blow over. There'll be some sort of vaccine or whatever. You know, we all got our fingers crossed. And then get on a plane, and uh, I got to go, go. We're recording in um, outside of Birmingham, England, right? So. Well, that said, I was reading that, that you guys were in the process of recording a full album when the COVID-19 thing happened, right? Right. And I, like, yeah, our producer, Mike Crumpus, he's Canadian, but he, we started off recording in Tennessee, which is a real drag, like border crossing. Okay, sir, what do you do? I'm a musician. Oh, oh, musician, eh? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Bring out the drug sniffing dogs. Where are the dogs? Yeah, there you go. And I don't even <laughs> do that stuff. And it's the honest truth. And um, so that was Tennessee. We got all our beds done, most of the vocals done, but not quite. Then he moved uh, to England. So where he goes, um, we follow him. And um, so I had just gone there by myself, probably for the first time I've ever uh, gone into a studio and recorded without dairy. It's just uh, logistics weren't right. So I went by myself and finished Find What You're Looking For and a couple of other tracks, but I'm still not done. And I just made it back into Ontario just as this COVID thing was starting to rise up so we need to get back you know fingers crossed like uh let me get back finish finish a record that we started but hey that's whining i don't want to do that anymore so how are you well you're not you're not whining i mean you know this is what you do for a living and now you're put on pause just like other people have been put on pause so it's not it's not about whining it's about wanting to get back to do what you love to do right well, thanks for putting it in in a nutshell. Thanks. So tell me tell me about Kelowna. I don't want to turn the in a, like how's everything going there? What? Think... So you're going to interview me now? No, no, no. I just want to know because I love the place. Yeah, no. Always... I mean, things are good as far as COVID goes. Um, we didn't really have a lot of cases here, 
So we've oh, managed good. to keep things under control very well so far. Right. The last little while, as things opened up again, of course, you know, we've had a few cases pop up in town, and, and people coming in from visiting from other places uh, have been bringing it with them. But, but still, overall, compared to a lot of other places in the country and in the world, I have to say we're doing really, really well. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good news. Yeah. I, like, I just got the news on this morning. They're... Uh, I think they're a little bit, I don't, don't know if it's too soon, but they're starting to, they're thinking about opening up schools here in Ontario. And uh, I think people, have the, your kids, whatever, have the option whether to get into that environment or not. So things are looking up. I mean, uh, it, it's looking better than it was. For sure, as much as it can. So have you been able to work on the album remotely at all? Uh, I can't do that. I mean, uh, like send a vocal over online. Uh, I just can't do that. Okay. I mean, I'm too old school. I mean, I wish I could. I would have the record finished by now. Um, I need, it's a face-to-face thing with me. I mean, we can start writing online, like writing the songs, but uh, I'm a face-to-face guy. Like I, I've got literally, Jerry lives, the guitar player lives in Illinois. You know, some Peoria. Oh, really? Some okay. Yes. So... Uh, we'll do everything we possibly can online, but I got to get on a plane and get to his house. And that's what I've done just to finish things up. So, and then I know I'm babbling on, but anyways, not at all. So they've asked me to do some of these zoom things and Skype things. And it just, it just doesn't cut it for me. Like I'd rather be, you know, good talking with you on the phone. At least we got a good connection and uh, you know, I'm going to keep it that way. Derry's doing the Skype and zoom and uh, I'm doing all the phones. Yeah, you know what? I prefer the phone thing too, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's clear, yeah. right? And I could hear, I could hear your voice, and you know, it's for me, it works. And I just keep, I'm gonna keep that up at this point, anyway. <laughs> uh, have you picked up any new hobbies while on lockdown? Um, okay, this sounds silly. Washing my mom's clothes. I mean, like, that's not wow. silly. You're taking care of your mom. What's more noble yeah. than that? Okay, well, it gets kind of tough. This brassiere thing, not to get into it, but like, <laughs> it's like she has workers and nurses come in the morning, and okay. I say separate the separate the stuff, and then I'll wash it, right? And some sometimes they don't, and it's like gets caught up in all the other stuff, and it's like, but I think I got it figured out. You just put it together, you know, like yes. snap it together, and then throw it in, and it works, seems to be working. As a woman, I have <laughs> some tips. <laughs> okay, go ahead. When you're washing them, first of all. Hand washing is even better. If you could just throw them in the sink with some detergent, then they kind of okay. they don't lose their shape and they don't get snagged on other things. But if you really right. want to put okay. it in the machine, yeah, you're right. Just just att- attach the loops, and and you yeah. sh- you should be fine. Um, yeah, well, that's just one of the things. I mean, but just being home is and getting used to like meeting neighbors that you know. Hey, there you are. You know, it's just, this is the first time in decades for me. Like meeting who lives, actually meeting and actually talking to people who live close to me. Um, but uh, actually picking up something new, nah, no, it's been busy times. Okay. Going back and, going back and forth with uh, dairy and trying to figure all this sort of stuff out. Yeah. There's a certain energy that the people that you work with, you don't even, I don't even sometimes realize it, but there's an energy there. And then now it's taken away from you. And it's like, now I got to learn this. And it's like, you know, I got agents saying, hey, Johnny, you want to, you heard of this drive-in thing yeah. where you actually get on stage and, yes. then, and, you know, we've got, there's so much been dished out to us <clears throat> over the, how many decades now but i don't know if i could do that i mean i don't even know if it's right for people to to be doing that so i don't know it's a it's a new world but we all got to stay positive you know all, all got to stay healthy and i think canada's you know in general is doing it like a great job of getting this whole thing under control most definitely and that's what i try to keep in my mind and what i i tell the people because it, it's been mentally draining on everybody that to try to keep in the back of your mind that uh, this is going to come to an end right we don't know when it's going to happen but it will right. end at some point we will get through it yeah we will get through it and uh if this is not the first time in, in you know in the history of the world i mean there's been other pandemics you sure. know that that we've got through them we just have to get through this one and uh, we're all we're all doing the right thing so absolutely that's, that's good and imagine the time that we're living in now imagine if this had happened 
when you were you guys were on your first or second album and there was no internet happening and there was no way to keep connected to people you know uh what yeah, no. you know, I in, know. A, in a way we're kind of lucky that this thing is happening to us in this age where we're not uh, isolated right well that's a very promising thing you know that's, that's a great thing just to, to say ricky i mean yeah i mean yeah I would imagine if it was like back then yeah this whole social media thing is is has always been really hard to get used to i mean people can say whatever they want to say like you know three o'clock in the morning you know facebook age hey, why was johnny doing that or why did he say that oh, oh, i know jeez <laughs> and you got to wake up in the morning and it's like oh Break, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but it's but it's been a good thing. No, and, you know, it has I've its met, advantages for sure. Yes, exactly. And I've met a lot of friends that I normally would not have met, you know, via internet, you know, from way back then, from high school and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. With that being said, uh, yeah, it's it, it's all good. We'll make it through. Absolutely, we will. Uh, I want to ask you about the song. Find what you're looking for is the title, and I, it's just such a great, positive, uplifting. There you go. Song. Uh, what, tell us how how that came together. Uh, well, first of all, we when we're starting writing now, the love songs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we wanted this one track, especially me. I wanted to write an ins- inspirational track, like a self journey track, like get up and go. If you got something good. Um, hang on to it. Um, it. There's no hidden agenda, agenda to the lyric. I mean, it's pretty pretty much straightforward. But I think I think the lyric is hits home. Especially, I think it's pertinent with uh, what's going on, you know, in the world right now. So it's an uplifter. It's like get up and go kind of thing. Yeah, it is really wonderfully uplifting. Thank you. I really love it. And then speaking of finding what you're looking for, I'm so excited because I was talking about this a year ago on my show and putting the word out there for you. I understand you got some of your stolen gear back. Oh yeah. Jeez. I got everything back except except for two uh, priceless guitars. I mean, these people, whoever stole them cannot sell them. They're, they're custom made. You can't put them in a store. Um, Yeah. But long story short, just this back to the internet and all that sort of stuff. My stuff ended up in a pawn shop. Some little kid went and bought, something of mine and all my names my name was it's all whatever it's all titled with my name right um but the thieves forgot to lift up a pedal and uh because my name was under it so this kid (laughs) who bought it this kid who bought it brings it home and it's my pedal board takes one of the pedals out lifts it up and sees johnny d on the bottom of it right he uh got got in touch with facebook via me and I uh, said, hey, you know, you should go check this store. Maybe your stuff's in it. Anyways, it was the next day on a Sunday. I was there like at uh, some pawn shop in Hamilton, I believe. Um, I was there like at 10 to, 10 to 12. It opened up at noon. I was waiting outside. I walk in, and there's there's some of my guitars like oh, on, man. on the ground. So uh, at that point, like m- my heart just dropped. So like there's nobody in the store. I picked up the guitars, and I moved them off to the side. And the owner or whomever comes up to me and goes, what are you doing? I go, look, I need, I need a second here, you know, but I'm going to go outside. I'm going to calm down and I'm going to come back in. Right. And then uh, at that point, yeah, I got my guitars back. Um, some of the guitars back, most of the gear. I have all the technical backline stuff that I carry. Right. Um, and uh, I got most of that back. Just a few special items that I'm not going to get back, but I'm over it. That's amazing, though. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, this little kid did not have to get in touch with me. No, but, of know, course. He just could have said, no, 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 you know, whatever. But he did. And it's like, yeah, so. You know what? The same maybe... thing happened to my husband one time. My husband's a drummer, and he had his okay. drums stolen. And same thing. A friend of his walked into a pawn shop and called him up and said, I think I saw your drums at oh, this man. pawn shop. Yeah. I know, I know these are just musical in- instruments, but it's like somebody stealing your clothes or your underwear. It's like, gee, what do you, you know, this is, this is what I live on. It's like, yeah. how can you do that? You know, it's like pretty, pretty bad stuff. But uh, that's over with. That was, uh, I believe, 217 or 18 or something like that. Well, but, I'm yeah. glad you got that stuff back. That's, that's well, a, thank you. crazy and I'm crazy you how can... it happened. So, yeah, well, I, I think I was marked, you know, you know, they, they spotted me. And uh, I had left the stuff. It was so tired. I, I don't. I was coming back from the West Coast, and it's like, I just remember 
parking that truck and going, I, I need to just lay my head down for a couple hours. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was gone. So that's how, that's how quick these things can happen. Yeah, anyway, for sure. That's well, the way it goes. A somewhat happy ending to a crappy situation. Yeah, exactly. So that's good. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm looking forward to the new album, seeing you guys back in Kelowna when we get through these crazy times. You know Kelowna loves you, and, and we miss having you here. Well, thanks. I miss the place. Great time. Like I just, like I spoke earlier, like I all, almost moved there. I have musician friends there. Uh, they're, they're, we're just going to get like a little country sort of thing. It's about 40 minutes outside of, maybe, maybe even 30 minutes outside of uh, Kelowna. And uh, he's one of the guys from Prism. Uh, maybe you know right. him. His name, his name is Tad, and he lives not too far yeah. out of the city. And uh, anyways, I, uh, that, that was a that was a while back. But I miss the place. It's always fun to play there. And miss touring, I guess. Miss being on stage. Uh, all those things that you do in normal times, right? Yeah, exactly. Like it, There's times where you, I said to myself, geez, I need a little bit of time off. Oh, I got some time off now, I tell you. <laughs> you know. Yeah, geez. no kidding. Time off that none of us really asked for that we were forced into. Exactly. Well, as I said before, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. And can't wait to see you here again. Well, thanks. And thanks for this call. You seem so uplifting. That's great. Keep it up. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you and talk to you. And, you know, I've been a fan of yours. Uh, I, I wouldn't have gotten through high school without New Girl now, probably. So <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. That's great. Well, thanks. Really nice to talk to you. A real pleasure. Really nice to talk to you. and It's, it's a pleasure. Say hi to Kelowna for me. I will do that, Johnny. Thank you so much. And we'll see you. We'll see you sooner than later, I hope. Anytime you want to talk, you are more than welcome on the show, okay? Okay, Ricky, thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Johnny. Take care. Take care of yourself.